in Chicago at Light Reading's big telecom event, and I'm standing here with John Govert from JDSU. John, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Talk to me about what some of the biggest hurdles and challenges that carriers are facing as they look towards SDN and NFV deployments. So really, I think the network and the carriers are suffering through the point right now where the, the hype cycle is kind of, kind of over. Now they're all in the, you know, the hard work of making this thing actually imp implementable. Um, some of the big issues right now is really that without the standards being ready, people are really building their own kind of proof of concepts before the standards are ready. So getting interoperability to work is still going to be a, a challenge. Um, the performance of the infrastructure to get it to, to, to work to the levels that, that uh, your, your custom hardware can do is still a, a significant challenge. Folks like Intel have moved the ball forward a lot with a lot of their technologies, but um, it, it's still a, a, a good long ways to go. Getting the, the back office working with the orchestration, things such as the um, inventory databasing is a huge challenge that these operators have to now work with. Um, so those are some of the some of the big ones. And then dealing, of course, in our area, making sure that the, the network is reliable. And the whole reliability model is going to be changing in this, this uh, world, but being able to measure performance and make sure that the, the application is really reliable, that's, that's a drop-dead requirement. Now you mentioned network reliability, and that's a top of mind issue that keeps coming up over and over again. What is the industry doing to address that? Um, you have to attack it from, from multiple levels. At the end of the day, what's most important is, is the SLAs, the, the customer service. You have to meet the, meet the, the SLA requirements. So at the end of the day, that's always where, where things start. Now, digging below that, you're going to have to have different levels of performance requirements down beyond the application customer SLA or service SLA. You're going to have to be able to determine how the infrastructure is performing, how the orchestration is performing, how the individual BNFs are performing, but then at the end of the day, how all those service chains actually work when they get pulled together into a, a, a network that's offering a service or application, that's where the rubber hits the road. So there's different constructs that you're going to need in order to verify the performance of the infrastructure, the service, and the application. Okay, how do you think testing, performance monitoring, and assurance are going to need to change it's, um, there's really a whole sea change that is going to change. For, for, for one, um, the whole uh, assurance world used to be something that would, was something you'd, you measure the performance of an application and then you, you would uh, put reports up and it was a pretty static type environment. Now, in, in this dynamic world, the assurance have to move into a, a much more real-time construct. So you need to be able to get these, this performance information within Seconds, minutes, I mean the 15 minute, one hour model just is, is unacceptable now. So the whole real time aspect, fundamental, fundamental change to what, how assurance is, is going to be changing. Of course, um, a lot of the assurance systems that were appliance based with, with their own hardware, that has to eventually go away and you move much more towards an agent based model. So the industry is really looking for a, a, a very software centric agent based model that you can deploy dynamically across the infrastructure and provide real-time feedback and control back up into, into the, the network. And obviously, you, you've got to um, give that, that, that real-time performance feedback and then make certain that the new model can also work back with the legacy infrastructure as well. So you still have to maintain the backwards compatibility with, uh, with the, call it the, the, the legacy network. This is going to take a, a number of years to transition over in time. Okay, which services or applications and network areas are being addressed first? It started off in terms of virtualization and what parts of the network were being virtualized. A lot of activity a couple of years ago was in the, the mobile EPC domain, the enhanced packet core, virtualizing that part of the network. That's actually making, making some real progress going forward. There's still a lot of work happening there. I see a lot more activity now on, on the, the virtual CPE, doing you know, work with, and you have some, some views on on taking away a lot of the boxes, the physical boxes that may have been out at the customer prem and virtualizing those boxes, putting them into either NG CPE or putting them back into the network. So a lot is, is happening on, on that side in particular. Another area that is, is really starting to pick up, um, and there was a, a good talk actually at the, the, the conference earlier, is not called call virtualization, but, but getting the optical core now at least into the software defined world. So putting the, the, a control plane that can work with the optical core as well. A lot is, is happening there to get, um, see a lot of interest to get really um, high speed, you know, multi-gigabit services that can be provisioned much more quickly in, in terms of 
hours, days versus weeks and months. So that, that's a, a real new, I gotta call it a new area that the, the, the vendor's been working on for a while, but I think we'll see some of those services really start to roll out here over the next, next, uh, next few years, next few months actually. Now JDSU is involved in several POCs. Can you talk to me about any of those? We're involved in a number of POCs, specifically with different carriers I can't speak too much about. On the public side, we've, we've um, chosen to work significantly within the um, telecom management forum, the TMF. Um, two specific POCs that we're working with is one related to virtual CPE, where we're taking some of our uh, test capabilities, virtualizing it, putting it on, on a next generation CPE, and getting that test capability orchestrated uh, dynamically into the, the, the CPE. Um, so we're working with um, Alcatel, Ericsson, it's, um, I think AT&T is a sponsor on that one, but it's a formal, formal demo we had just last week in, in Nice. Um, another one we're working on is, is a, um, a decision-making called POC to determine where to best deploy your VNF infrastructure using some of the analytics that we can provide based upon how the applications and the network's performing. Um, so we're working with some orchestration vendors, infrastructure vendors on, on that one as well. So, both those, we're, we're learning a lot and work with a great set of partners along the way. John, where are we at now? What are some of the current capabilities? So, um, where we've, uh, current capabilities that we have, we're actually doing the demos on, relate to our, what we call our virtualization of our layer four test capability. That's um, today um, part of that, that, um, that TMF VCPE trial. Um, this is something that's actually uh, deployed in its current infrastructure in, in current networks, um, where we virtualize test capability and, and um, basically take it away the need to have a hardware box for doing uh, throughput testing. Um, so we've got a big, big focus there. We also have a, a big focus on, on the, the work in the EPC, and we've taken our, our mobile monitoring system and we're working on, on virtualizing that infrastructure, the, the appliances, putting on x86 platforms and, and providing the KPIs so you can really look at how, how the mobile network's performing in application terms. Um, it's really significantly reduce the cost of what it takes to monitor the network by putting the appliances on an x86 infrastructure. Great, John, thanks so much. Thank you.